What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Brawl Project. Today we're going to be taking a look at a deck that I've been meaning to build for a while but just haven't gotten around to it. This is going to use Alila Artful Provocateur as the commander. Uh, Alila is a white, blue, black general that costs 4 mana and is a 2-3 flying lifelink death touch. Other creatures you control with flying get plus 1 plus 0 oh, and whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. There are a lot of ways you can go with Alila. You can build her as a flying commander and just have a bunch of flying creatures and try to pump them with Alila and, and just have some synergies going that way. You can play her as just a, an Esper control commander, or you can do what we're doing here, which is going to be as an artifact or an, an enchantment uh, build focused build here. One of the two of the big cards that I really wanted to play with that I really haven't gotten a chance to, at least not to the extent that I've wanted to, are Banish into Fable, which is a pretty sweet one. Six mana when you cast this, well, let's talk about what it does. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. You create a 2-2 white knight uh, creature token with Vigilance, so it's Dispersed plus uh, a 2-2 white knight. But when you cast it from your hand, it copy it if you control an artifact, and then copy it if you control an enchantment. So for six mana, you can return three things to their uh, con uh, owner's hands and create three knight tokens. So I, I really like this card. <laughs> and I've been looking for an opportunity to play it, and Alila is the perfect one. The other one, you've tried you've seen me try to play this card in many decks before, if you've been say if you've been uh, tuned to the Brawl project. Dance of the Man's X White Blue, return up to X target artifact and or non aura enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is 6 or more, those permanents are 4-4 creatures in addition to their other types. So this is just like the ultimate recursion spell. If you cast this for 8 mana, you can return 6 artifacts and enchantments to the board, and then all of a sudden you've got all of your synergies going on, you get to uh, destroy, or sorry, exile your opponent's stuff with you know, Banishing Light, Conclave, Tribunal, Prison Realm. Uh, I've tried to play this, but I haven't had a deck that uses it well enough, and I'm really hoping that this is the deck, because this card is all sorts of sweet, uh, or at least the potential that I can imagine with it is incredible, and I really want to, I really want to realize that. Okay, so, so, um, this deck is going to be almost entirely enchantments and artifacts. As you can see, we've got one Planeswalker, We've got, you know, a handful of instant sorceries, two creatures, and then nine artifacts and 14 enchantments. So obviously we've got the mana rocks. Those are the best artifacts for a lot of things. Um, I guess I actually, something I didn't include here that I maybe could have is a God Pharaoh statue, because that's pretty good at slowing people down. But uh, I, I think this deck is kind of on the grind them out plan, and God Pharaoh statue is better when you're we're really aggressively ramping to it. We've got the... Uh, enchantments that exile things, Banishing Light, Conclave Tribunal, Prison Realm, um, Glass Casket, which is an artifact, but it really feels more like an enchantment. And uh, and then we've got the enchantments that combine for Angels, Divine Visitation, plus any token maker. Usually you want to pair that with Dawn of Hope, but Dawn of Hope is pretty good on its own in this deck. We have a bunch of random ways of gaining life. And then we've got the Sagas, which are really nice because those are enchantments that kind of function as spells. We've got Birth of Miletus, uh, Metamized Prophecy, Elspeth Conquers Death, and Elspeth's Nightmare. And I think all these work pretty well. They also all go to the graveyard for Dance of the Mans. Um, Alright, so in addition to that, we get to we get access to a couple of tutors. Idyllic Tutor just searches for an enchant... Oh, I forgot. Kiora Best the Sea God. Very powerful saga. So we have Idyllic Tutor to search for an enchantment. If we have... Dawn of Hope or Divine Visitation online, we will probably want to get the other half on so that we can just start pumping angels out. That's a pretty good way to take over the game with this deck. Or we could just go get, like, Cure Our Best the Sea God or Removal Spell if that's just what we're interested in. Um, the other tutor we have is Wishclaw Talisman, and I know that this card does not make it to very many lists because, well, your opponent gets a hold of it <laughs> as soon as you play it. But the idea is that, you know, late in the game we're going to be able to Wishclaw Talisman for, um, for the Dance of the Mance and then return a bunch of stuff. If we give our opponent the Wishclaw Talisman, we could potentially, uh, exile this with something like Conclave Tribunal or, or, uh, Banishing Light. 
Um, the two creatures in this deck are Cavalier of Dawn and Realm Cloak Giant. This is more of a spell than anything. It's just another super effect. Although my stock on Realm Cloak Giant is starting to go down because I've noticed that with Uro and with uh, Croxa, people are starting to play a lot more giants and, and the uh, non-giant clause is a lot less like flavor text. And uh, Cavalier of Dawn is really good. It destroys anything. It gets back uh, an artifact or enchantment of which we have a lot. So uh, that's the deck. We're going to try to grind them out um, with this one. Get to a late game situation where you can play a huge Dance of the Mans and uh, well, that's really what we're going for with this deck. I think I do think that like white, this is a very white centric deck. I feel like white is really suffering right now in Brawl and uh, yeah, this, this deck is going to have all the problems that white has where you don't have very many cards that like get value as you play them and you also have like, Banishing Light and Conclave Tribunal aren't good, well, they're okay answers, but they're not as good as, like, Counter Magic, which stops the Enter the Battlefield effect. So many things get, get value immediately right now, and, and a lot of value. So, uh, this type of removal is scary, especially when you're playing against, like, a Teferi that can bounce it, or an Ugin that can destroy it and, and free up whatever is under one of these enchantments. So, th this deck definitely is going to run into the issues of, of white decks, but we're going to see if we can have some fun with uh, some of these cards. I had an earlier build of this deck that played a lot more blue and like counter magic, and it was probably better, but it was just boring. Like, I'm so sick of playing counter magic. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had that Ashiok uh, deck video that I, I made a couple days ago, and I think I'm still sick of countering things from it. All right, well, um, if you enjoy Brawl content, be sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Sunnyvale, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is day five of make a YouTube video every day. So check out the other four and check out the next two, I suppose. All right, let's get into some games, shall we? I am excited to see if I can cast Dance in the Mans. Let's let's see if this happens. All right, let's go. Here we go, playing against Thassa Deep Dueling. Well, this might be actually a matchup that... I like it quite a bit. So we'll keep this. We've got Mana Geode on three. Hopefully between Temple and our draw steps, we'll be able to find another land. There we go. Um, we can even go Hallowed Fountain tapped and then Plains untapped and then the Fable Passage will be tapped. Or sorry, untapped. So that's that's good. Um, if our play, opponent plays something cool, we can Cavalier have done it. That Arcane Signet is probably worth hitting. There's a Mana Geode. Our opponent... I mean, there are different ways you can build uh, Tha uh, Thassa. Yeah, I'll keep a Thirst. I don't know, like, uh, tempo negative plays are not something I'm a huge fan of in in Brawl. So, like, if they play Thassa, they're just going to play Firemind Vessel. Oh, easy, okay. Easy play, easy play. Definitely doing this. Sacking. Let's get a Plains. Let's get an island. I'm not sure. Either way, we can play Cavalier of Dawn, but playing Cavalier of Dawn just taking out that Fire Mind Vessel is huge. Although, well, they can't... They definitely can't kill the Cavalier of Dawn, not in blue, right? I don't know. This is just going to do a pretty good job of blocking, which I'm excited about. On the next turn, we're probably just going to play Thirst for Meaning. Um, and then Thought, uh, Cure our Best the Sea God. Hopefully they don't counter it. We get to attack with Cavalier of Dawn here. Wow, our opponent is really big on these uh, mana rocks. Okay, three mana up. That's, uh, that's pretty suspicious, I'd say. Let's just lead off with this Thirst of Meaning. If they counter it, it's no big deal. Like, I'd much rather them counter that than something like Cure Best the Sea God. Yeah, okay, fine. Are they milling me? That's... Well, now... Okay, I mean, that's fine, I mean... That gives Cavalier of Dawn uh, a target. It, otherwise, it would have died. If, if it would have died, it wouldn't have gotten value. All right, I'll get a Swamp here. Sure, why not? And uh, if they tap out for something, we're going to best the Sea God. If they don't tap out for anything... Okay, it kind of felt like that might be what was going on. Cavalier of Dawn, that's pretty good. They can get back the Fire Mind Vessel. Alright, well, let's best the Sea God. That's going to stand in front of all of these. Unless they play, like, their own Cure Best the Sea God, it's hard to imagine them dealing with this Kraken. Thassa? Oh, right. Thassa, Agent of Treachery, of course. Um, so they can steal this. Okay. 
Yeah, that's that that that's that's pretty obnoxious. <laughs> Not gonna lie. All right, I, I forgot about that. Every every Thassa deck plays Adrian and Treachery and then does this loop. Okay, so. Well, I guess I start off with Idyllic Tutor. Alila just does not me seem like it's going to do anything. If my opponent has a counterspell to back this up, I'm just dead. There's there's nothing, like, there's no way I'm beating Agent and Treachery every turn. And I'm going to guess that that means that they have a counterspell. Um... Man, if we had one more mana, we could actually... Oh, that's a bummer. Is there any way I can do this with... Something that costs two. No, I can't. Oh, that's a bummer. If I had one more creature or one more mana, I could Elspeth's Nightmare and Conclave Tribunal, but I think we're just gonna get countered here and that's gonna be the game. No? No? Oh. <laughs> oh in my mind, that Agent of Treachery had two, man two, uh, two power. All right, nice. Good game. I'm pretty sure my opponent had a counterspell there anyway, um, but yeah, playing Concre Conclave Tribunal definitely would have been better there. All right, I I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I just uh, I just totally blanked on the fact that when when you're playing against the Thassa deck, you have to be aware of the Agent of Treachery at all times, and uh, yeah, I definitely should have gotten rid of the Agent of Treachery rather than. Um, try to resolve my 7-drop. Alright, opponent goes first, Cura. Um, this hand is, like, really expensive. I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan. Alright, seems fine. We've got a Shadow of the Sky, which... Depending on how they build the Cura deck, could be good or bad. Um, I think... I think that Cura deck should play a lot of creatures, but... You know... <laughs> Just because I think a deck should be built a certain way doesn't mean that everyone does that, necessarily. Growth Spiral, that's pretty good. We get to play Teferi, which is obnoxious for my opponent, but if they've got something like a Questing Beast, they can take it down. My opponent is forced to play a... Sure. If my opponent's forced to play like some sort of fair game against Teferi, then, then maybe we're doing something. The Teferi is mostly to actually, um, it's actually mostly just to get some value off the enchantments, but, and prevent our opponent from using counter spells, but, uh, it's not really doing either of those things here. I don't know, it could be stopping our opponent from playing counter spells, I, I don't know whether that's true or not. This is going to be tough, I mean... Jura's kind of just getting to have its free reign. Mix Lotus? Okay, I think I should bounce that one. Well, let's bounce first. Metamized Prophecy? I think I'm just going to play a Leela. Like, the Simic deck doesn't have a ton of... Um, straight removal, and next turn, if I play, like, Firemind Vessel or something, I get a little bit of value. My opponent has a lot of mana, and I don't really have any defenses to handle anything that my opponent does. The other thing I could have done is I could have played Firemind Vessel and then set up for, like, a Sweeper on this turn. But, yeah, I mean, our opponent had a lot of mana last turn, and we were tapped out. There's the Cavalier of Thorns. No surprise there. Get a land. Untap something. Play Nyx Lotus. Yeah, this uh, this seems pretty good for my opponent. Gotta say. If I were hypothetically to kill this Thor Cavalier of Thorns, what would they get? Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, that's a uh, that is very good. That is a powerful play, I must say. What am I supposed to do? Time wipe? Past my opponent's turn in time wipe? I guess so. Okay. Trust me, I have a plan. This is not an obvious line. <laughs> Mm 
Not an extremely obvious line. That's tapped, right? So we're gonna try to untap it and I'll time wipe it in response. Okay. And so this still gets to tap, but it only taps for one mana instead of seven. And they probably put like a I think put the Cavalier of Thorns on top. Huh, that's interesting. Why would they want to replicate? That, like, is something that can get blown. I mean, like, it's a powerful effect, sure, but it's something that can get blown out. You got it. I guess that's a free roll because of Nick's Lotus. Uro? Like, maybe Uro and then copy it? But that's just a growth spiral. Well, <laughs> against this type of deck, I'm definitely missing the counter magic. I mean, you know, spending a lot of mana to, to go big. I don't, know, I don't even get to draw a card with Tiara. Hmm, Cavalier of Dawn. What am I going to do with that? Well, if I shatter sky this guy, the opponent gets to draw something, so that's not great. If I Cavalier of Dawn something, I guess a Cavalier of Dawn the Voracious Hydra. Then my opponent gets to play Uro and copy it. Uh, copy it. That's not spectacular. It's not terrible. Maybe I just cash in my Teferi here. I don't hate that. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna cash it in. Might be a bad idea. And I'm gonna get uh, Alila going here. They can fight it with Voracious Hydra, but they it's a trade. And I get to get the And I get to get a um, a fairy right away. Last casket. And that can get rid of the Hydra, I guess? Dillic Tutor? Dillic Tutor is probably good. Probably just want the Glass Casket first. It also answers Uro, and that's a pretty big deal. Unless they repudiate it, for uh, of course. So, they would have to play, tap at least 5 mana for the Voracious Hydra. I'm probably not winning this game. <laughs> I think I'm just getting crushed here. Like, I think that's just what's going to happen. You get to play Uro, draw, yep, okay. Here's, here's the Uro. Draw a card, draw a card, play an additional land. There was no real way for me to deal with that Uro. Like, I, I guess I could have answered Kiora. I guess stopping Kiora would prevent them from drawing like three cards here. I guess doing this did nothing. I don't know, but like if my turn is Prison Realm, Medemai's Prophecy, it's, uh, feels a little embarrassing. Let's go to the command zone. I have to figure out what I'm playing after this turn, which is going to be tricky. Are they going to copy this? It's kind of weird, like it's a draw to Growth Spiral, which I guess is like, fine. Oh, they can untap this for a million mana. Yeah, that, that that's pretty good. Untapping for a million mana. <laughs> yeah. well, that's going to be sacrificed, right? What happened? I felt like the token did not stay around for very long. Anyway, this is this is like one of the problems that I have with white decks. You can't really do much about your opponent playing a game like this, where they just go super big. So, this turn I can play Cavalier of Dawn plus Glass Gasket. I think that's probably my line. 
And the following turn, I'm probably going to play, I'm probably going to play Alila. So let's just name that. So let's get Hero out of here. And let's get Uro out of here. My opponent only has three cards in hand. If they're all blanks, maybe we're doing something. But they also have access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then twelve, thirteen mana, fourteen. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's a that's a lot. That is more than twice what I have access to. Well, no, it's exactly twice what I have access to right now. What is this? Agent of Treachery? Hey, look. I don't really have anything good going on right now. You can go ahead and Agent of Treachery me. That's cool. I'm down with that. Are you going to copy it? Are you going to copy the Cavalier of Dawn? Maybe, maybe this is all just a psych out. Let's see. Oh, they get the Great Hinge back if uh, Cav dies. Kiora untap something. All right, I would. I'm gonna go ahead and say that that was a that was a whiff. That was a favorable for up. They top something. I can prison realm the Cavalier of Dawn and shatter this guy. That means that I don't get to draw two off the Leela. I can also just play Leela. Like drawing the two cards seems pretty good. Two, five six. I might be able to draw into something that is useful. Yeah, you know what? It's just like too much value to pass up, you know? At some point, I'm probably going to Prison Realm this uh, Cavalier of Dawn. Oh man, the Smothering Tithe would have been really good early in this game. Like, super early in this game. I think one issue is that I was never able to develop the... Wow, they're not sorted. I was never able to develop the... Yeah, let's get the Swamp. Uh, the Firemind Vessel, and I just feel like I'm really far behind on mana because of it. Uh, yeah, we'll hold back for reasons. Boss's Intervention. X equals 2, so it's just a draw 2. They didn't want to counter me, instead they want to play that. We're going to die to Finale of Devastation, right? Like, they've only got 25 cards left in their deck. They've got to find it eventually. It's got to be some sort of huge Hands X-Bell. One drop ripples and grows. I'm going to pretend to say something like, this could have all been prevented if I did blank, but I, I don't think so. <laughs> all right. Liquid, liquid N. I am just up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was about to say I'm. I'm lying here waiting for the the finishing blow. Whoa. Am I alive? No, I'm not. I did three of these. Uh, if I had one more blocker, I'd be alive. All right, good game. All right, zero and two with the white deck. <laughs> We're going to get a good dance with the man's off. I feel it. And if not, this video is just never going to be posted. Alright, let's go on to the next one. O2. Alright, Teferi Time Raveler. Okay, I mean, look, it's not getting a whole lot better. This Shadow of the Sky is pretty garbage, but we'll keep. Hopefully we'll find a Black Source so we can at least do something on turn 4. Yeah, I mean, land is, like, fine, but I don't feel like we really need another... Blue source. Maybe I was supposed to just aggro, go for, uh, or aggro mulligan to get rid of these um, sweepers that are assuredly going to be dead against a Teferi deck until super late in the game when they're killing me with, uh, until they're killing me with, um, what am I thinking of? Field of the Dead. All right, here we go. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah. Okay, we're in the Teferi Fun Zone. 
Yes, yes, much fun. I'll protect you. Suppose I play Smothering Tithe. That's gonna tax them. They have to pay two if they don't want me to get a treasure. It gets some value if they to fairy bounce. Because like if I just play a Lila, they're just gonna to fairy bounce and then they have to fairy on the board. I have no pressure and um they are going to counter my next play, which is I not great. Alright, uh, Teferi is going to counter, or they're going to counter something. This is clear as day. Alright. Oath of Kaya, I'll also play Omen of the Sea. Yeah, go ahead, counter it. Surprise, surprise. Um, we kind of need to hit lands, but, like, what are we going to do? <laughs> I think, I think we want to hit both of these. I think both of these cards are good for us. I think we need to hit that sixth land. And I think that Midnight Hour is like kind of a threat. If they don't counter the Midnight Hour, I can just play Smothering Tithe. Here we go. If they do counter it, I can, or Midnight Clock, what am I talking about? Okay. So my opponent, again, assuredly has a counter spell. If they do counter this, at least we get to sacrifice the Omen of Sea. Okay, well, they're going to counter this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Counter it. See if I care. I do care. I care a lot. <laughs> yep, yeah, didn't say please. Okay. Uh, when do we get to get hit by Agent of Treachery plus uh, Teferi? Because I'm really looking forward to that. That's, uh, that's kind of the highlight of games Let's against Teferi is when you get to the point where they get to play Teferi and Agent of Treachery your stuff. My opponent actually doesn't have that many blue sources, surprisingly. I could give them one. Okay, let's see. How much mana do we have? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is Elspeth plus not really anything. Um, I could go over with Banish into Fable. I think I like that. Yeah, I think this is what I want. Because this is good against Counter Magic. I'll just target all three of their permanents. Set them back a little. I mean, our opponent's just gonna, you know, play a sweeper on the at the end of our turn. But we're trying to gear up for Elspeth Conquer's death because that is a pain for them, and it threatens to get back Cavalier of Dawn, which is also a pain for them. Do they have enough for counter plus sweep? That would be obnoxious. Like, if they have to just replay to the fairy, like, if they just go sweep here. Alright. That's fine, I think. Ward? This is an instant? No, it's a sorcery that they played because of Teferi. Huh. Okay, that was not what I was expecting. I am down with them just playing Warden. Then what? Because then they only have five mana on their next turn. If they want to progress their board, then they can't really hold up counter magic as efficiently. Are they bouncing my Midnight Clock? Which is a sorcery, of course. Alright. Makes sense. I really need to add a command <laughs> to my Twitch channel that's just like, how does Sunny feel about uh, Teferi? Alright. What you got, opponent? You only have five mana. Signet. Okay, you only have four mana. 
carry. Okay. 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 Elspeth conquers death and is very good against the fairy. We're gonna take four in the air. That's fine. Our opponent doesn't have. Okay. Okay. Like if they had played an untapped land, they could have negate up. But I guess they also don't necessarily have a land drop. So let's just play. We can just play both, right? Yeah, we can. There's no taxing spell here. Unless they have, like, they can somehow give something hexproof, I guess. That would be obnoxious. Okay, so now they have to pay five for the Teferi. I like that. I like that. Um, we don't have anything in hand. We do have Elspeth Conqueror's Death on the table, which is pretty good. Because uh, it's threatening to get back Cavalier of Dawn, which is threatening to get, to get back, you know, Divine Visitation or something. Um, but, you know, we can, like, cast our commander or, uh, or put counters on Midnight Clock or something. I don't know. I think, gosh, them having something that draws a card with Shadow of the Sky is a bummer. I'm probably going to have to hit this Labyrinth, right? Yeah, probably. So holding up Counter Magic the turn after someone plays Elspeth Conquer's Death is really difficult because you have to pay a tax on it. Very... Oh, I've done the hero thing before. I cannot block that. Alright, Conclave Tribunal. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, I think I play a Leela plus Conclave Tribunal. Yeah, it's pretty obnoxious if they sweep, but I can get Cavalier of Dawn back, I guess. The other thing I could do is I could Conclave Tribunal, the snow, mm, I wouldn't be able to get rid of Teferi. Okay, so I think I just need to get rid of Teferi. Yeah. So this way I get to keep up, uh... Field of Ruin and Midnight Clock activation. Because if Ma Midnight Clock gets up to 12, which is, is difficult, for sure. But if it does get all the way up there, then... Uh, then we do get to draw 7, which is good against a deck that you know is trying to control the game. If they attack with the Sphinx, do I trade? think so. That frees up um, my attackers, and it means the Shadow of the Sky isn't utterly embarrassing. Alright, so I think they need some way to answer this Elspeth Conqueror's death. I guess maybe they... maybe it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna go to my turn. They've got lots of mana up. Well, I've got one choice here. Um, I'm gonna put a plus one, plus one counter on this. What should I target? I don't think it's entirely clear that I want to target the Sphinx. Like, the Sphinx is holding back the same things that the 3 3 would hold back, for the most part. Like, I guess the Flyers. So I think I'm actually gonna hit the Signet. Maybe I'm crazy? Yeah, this Howled Fountain was not a fantastic draw. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so we can play it tapped. Um, I, I guess I go to combat because they have the mana. Um, I guess I send with the Leela. I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, so Shadow of the Sky is a whole lot less embarrassing now. We'll play this and Activate Midnight Clock a bunch of times. Our opponent could definitely just replay Teferi and, uh... Ooh, I, th I need to kill the Labyrinth, I think. I can't let them have that up. Destroy all non-giant creatures. I'll get an Elspeth, Elspeth Conqueror's death back. That is fine with me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Do I have a better option? I mean, Elspeth Conquer's Death is kind of the the uh, cycle here, right? You recur Elspeth Conquer's Death, and then you recur. But I could also get Divine Visitation, which is my combo. No, I think it's better just to get Elspeth Conquer's Death. It also answers the um, Midnight Clock that they might play. Oh. 
I guess it is a little embarrassing if, you know, I go through all this trouble to develop cards in hand and then Midnight Clock goes off and I just have to put them all away and I have uh, as good of a hand afterward. Alright, it's at 10. Castle Mantras. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'll just activate the Midnight Clock. I guess I can do it now. Do this. Goes to 11 on their turn. Then activate it one more time. Okay. Let's just... Whatever. We're going to try to go off with the Midnight Clock. Hopefully they don't have uh, instant speed bounce. Let's stop on our opponent's draw step and, and make sure that we activate this before they draw a card. I mean, I guess I can just do it now, right? Alright, new hand. Hey, there's the Dance of the Mans, and we're in a late game situation. Perfect! <laughs> okay, what do we have fun? Ooh, hey, we got there! We didn't get to do anything too cool, but I guess we just grinded them down. Elspeth Conquers Death is very good against Teferi, I like it. All right, let's go on to the next one. Momentum, momentum. Yarok the Desecrated. I feel like this might be a pretty reasonable matchup also. Ooh, this hand is close. It's got some of the control elements I want, but no blue source. I'm gonna mulligan it. Okay, well this hand is like the last one, except a million times better, so we're definitely keeping this. <laughs> Um, so if we can just, like, control the board against Yarok, make sure that they can't stick the Yarok, I think we've got a pretty good shot here. Um, let's go ahead and play that Plains. If they play something that I can kill with the Oath of Kaya, I'm going to kill it with the Oath of Kaya. If they play something like Mana Geode, I'm going to bounce it with Teferi. Teferi bounce. Send right back in turn. I'm getting too old for Take this. that turn again. Uh, then we have Temple of Science plus Oath of Kaya, or if they don't have anything that we can kill with Oath of Kaya, Chromatic Lantern. So Harry here was basically just a tempo play, and uh, I mean, Teferi does a lot of things. I think Teferi is like super busted. If if that wasn't like immediately apparent, <laughs> I, I I do think Teferi is mega busted. Okay, Minimize Prophecy. We're actually looking for a land here. I'm gonna go ahead and play Mana Geode. We would really like to hit that fifth land on time. There we go. Um, plus. No, I am not making this up as I go. All right, let's see what you got, opponent. Chromatic Lantern. Dibble flip. Okay. All right, so I just tick up to Fairy and pass. Right, I'm just gonna play. Our opponent's gonna play Yurok, and we're gonna play. Uh, Kaya's Wrath? Well, when I say tick up Teferi and pass, I mean play a Chromatic Lantern, tick up Teferi and pass. So, I mean, pretty much no matter what our opponent does here, we're going to want to go Kaya's Wrath into Kiora Best the Sea God. It's hard to imagine wanting to do something else, like not wanting to play the Kaya's Wrath here. If they play a Commander, or sorry, not Commander, a, a, a Planeswalker? Like, let's say if they play Garrick. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, they're gonna finish off the Teferi. <gasps> oh shoot! We get to we get to disrupt this with Kaya's Wrath. Cool. Worked out perfectly. They were going to finish off the Teferi with the Dread Presence, shooting it with when Swamp came into play, but it did not work out quite so well for them. Disinformation campaign. That's an interesting one. Okay, well, I think that Oath of Kaya is probably the weak link here. It kills something, but not reliably. 
play Kira Best to Sea God. Let's get that 8 8. Um, I think it's pretty unlikely that they survive, surveil and make us discard, so I'm just gonna play that land. That could definitely come back to bite me. Like, like there, yeah. That is an example of it coming back to bite me. They could have played Yarok first, but I guess it doesn't really matter because. Ah, uh, yes, okay. So they'd rather play the Cap Leader Stones. Makes sense. These are gonna stay tapped. I think the field is dead. One, two, three, four, five. This is land number six. Um, I could bounce something. I could just bounce Cure or Best the Sea God and play it again. Like, that's not the worst. Get another 8 8. You know what? Teferi, you don't do that much. <laughs> uh, what are my other options? I could bounce like Cavalier. You know, screw it. This is this is what Teferi is here for. For this I nonsense. <laughs> so 8 8. Um, we're going to attack with this 8 8, then we're going to attack with both. Our thumb's going to drop down to 1. I guess they could play Uro and gain some life. Um, I wouldn't mind stealing Uro. But this is also going to keep down keep the Mana Geode and the Chromatic Lantern top down. Oh, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I do admit. We're still going to beat down with these 8-8s. Eight they are large and have Hexproof. Alright, so... Do you like to go down to one? Ooh, opponent's going down to one. Maybe they have a way of copying this Meteor Golem. Or sweeping. Ugh, I hope they don't have a sweeper. Alright, well, they're at one. We're going to make a few tokens of various types. I mean, heck, we're just making all sorts of tokens. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to do this so we can F6. Get that F6 value. <laughs> Our opponent's at one. They can play Uro to gain three life. Yes, gain six life, I suppose. Yeah, I guess gaining six life is pretty good. Do they have enough cards? Yeah, they have enough cards. Okay, so the question is, do I do I attack with these Krakens? I don't think so. But they gain life from Jungle Hollow also. Alright, opponent is kind of doing stuff. I'm a little worried here. I can't even attack in the air. I guess I can attack with a Leela. But then they get the Cavalier of Thorns back. They bring back Cavalier of Night, which doesn't really do anything. So I, I do think it's worth attacking with this Alila. Just the Alila. And then I think we're going to just try to go up to Midnight Clock. How much mana do we have? Three, one, two, three, four activations of Midnight Clock. We'll get there in a couple of turns. Yeah, so we're gonna bring back that. I, I mean, I guess, yeah, they're gonna... They're not in danger of dying anymore, but like, wow, the game shifted. The, like, what this game was about shifted really quickly. First it was me aggroing them out. They were at, you know, one or whatever. Sacrificing things is not the most impressive here. I guess they they can get Uro back. They sacrifice Uro and then they play it again. Yeah, that's, I guess that's a thing. They need to get some more cards in the graveyard, though. You got it. I guess they can just start attacking. <laughs> All right. That's that's cool tech. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, well, I mean, I I just take it. I also don't have to attack. You got it. I'm not blocking. I need to keep this midnight clock alive. All right. So let's put some let's put some counters on this midnight clock, shall we? Five, six, seven, eight, nine on my turn. We can definitely get up to the point where we're drawing three, uh, seven cards. Birth of Miladis. Uh. Sure. I probably should have just not played the Birth of Miladis. It probably wasn't worth it. Alright, so we're gonna have two mana. Let's see what we get with the uh, seven cards that we draw. Omen. Okay. 
fine. Um, we'll just pass the turn and play that. I do have a Shadow of the Sky. If I had not played the Birth, I probably would have been able to play the Shadow of the Sky, huh? But playing Shadow of the Sky isn't necessarily great here. Like, I have to... I have to figure out how to win without, you know, actually killing my opponent's stuff, because then they get, you know, Uro, Yorok's Fenlurker, they get to draw cards and stuff. I have to get rid of this Yorok first, I suppose. Alright, we're just taking four. Um, this this game is no longer about trying to reduce my opponent to zero life. It's about gaining a ton of resources. Alright, Omen, let's go. We don't really have that much in our hand. Well, I shouldn't say that. Teferi plus Omen is pretty ridiculous. Alright, there's one half of our combo, Dawn of Hope. Let's look for the other half, shall we? Um, okay, so. Let's play Teferi. Oh yeah, Teferi plus Omen. <laughs> look, I'm playing the format because that's what Brawl is right now. I'm not going to pretend that I am a proponent of, what's my opponent waiting for? Okay. Um, oh man, Elspeth Conqueror's Death is really good here too, but you know what? Let's just go for this. Let's just close it out. All right, Angel Token, Field of the Dead. Um, I suppose I could play the Dawn of Hope. I kind of don't want to show my opponent that, whatever. <laughs> Closing it out. Closing out the game. No attacks. We're just gonna like start chump blocking the Cavalier of Night because I think that that's their plan to victory is, well, I mean, they could probably still grind us out, honestly, so. That's not necessarily the case. Anyway, um, next turn we've got five, six, yeah, that's fine. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen mana? Oh, they're attacking Teferi? Eh, I probably still want to block that. Oh man, Brick and Lettuce would even make uh, an angel now. Man, Field of Ruin even makes an angel? Decline. We don't need cards. We just need angels. I'll protect you. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. That lets them get to Uro faster. Does make sense. Well, they still need one card in the graveyard in order to Uro. Anyway, our game plan is just to use our mana, make angels, and uh, attack with those angels. This video is not over. This is a dangerous thing to say. This video is not over until we get a satisfying Dance of the Mance off. <laughs> I'm going to be here all night. Um, okay, that's not good for me. This is fine. This is less fine. Well, you know what? Oh, shoot, I totally forgot to make a... This is all part of the plan, where the plan is to, um, cast a huge dance in the mans. Like, they're not exiled, they're just, uh, in the graveyard. even end step this dance of the man's can die. Alright. Alright. 
So if I kill everything, they just get one thing back. They don't even... They get, like, a carry added back, right? Souls. Souls. Uh, okay, let's open it and see. Let's see if we can find it. Realm Cloak, nope. We need to find a... Oh, okay. That's a... That is a, um... A tutor. But we'd have to give it to our opponent, which I'm not sure I'm too hot about. Do we have anything that can answer? Nope, we've just got Divine Visitation and the Birth of Melodist. <laughs> okay. Zero, I guess they get to draw a card and it didn't escape, so it's going back to the graveyard. But they do have a bunch of, uh, what do you call it? They have a fully stocked graveyard. We have a lot of mana though. We're gonna start drawing some cards. We're, we're gonna find it. We'll find it. We'll find it. Um, do I want to just play this Elspeth's Nightmare? Probably. I'm gonna draw two cards first though. I really hope my opponent can't exile my graveyard. Seems like a thing that their colors would be able to do, huh? Bottom. Zombie. Yeah, Elspeth's Nightmare. I mean, <laughs> we need to get closer to exiling their graveyard, I think, really, more than anything. Um, we got 4 plus 3. So I can sacrifice the Omen of the Sea. And I can make a Dawn of Hope token. What if our opponent just gets up to, like, 12 mana and Finale of Devastations us? What happens then? 1, 2... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, okay, that, that seems like a thing that could happen. All right. This might not be good for me. We're going to replay Uro again. Yep. I have to figure out something to do against that. I think that involves... I probably just need another sweeper. Like... Realm Cloak Giant doesn't do it either. We need um, Kaya's Wrath, which I played already this game, I believe, way back when, if I am not mistaken. Let's scry. Elspeth Conquers Death? I mean, that's a really good card. Sure. I'll keep that. I think that's worth keeping. And make a token. Look, we don't play any counter magic. We're just here to spend all of our mana, every single thing. All right, you got a counter spell? Uh, no. Okay, excellent. I think I just take Uro. You can also just last casket the Uro, but then they get to Dream Eater. That's no good. All right, Dream Eater. You know what? Let's play Alila. They also have Cavalier Gales. Alright. Now let's play Elspeth Conquer's Death. I think I'm gonna save this Oath of Kaya. Like, killing a. Jeez, what do I. Maybe I just take this Yerok. No, they can just replay it. Okay. Get rid of this Uro for good. Out of here. Um. I guess I can just make a token with the remainder of my mana. Look, this game is going to come down to me Wishclaw Talismaning for a Dance of the Mans, and it's going to be totally sweet. Totally sweet. Okay. How many charge counters? It's two? What was that hit? Dawn of Hope? Oh, that hits Dawn of Hope. Okay. Dream Eater. Sure, what you got in a hit? Was that- that's not an upkeep, is it? What about playing Cavalier of Gales first? Then... Doing that. I guess they get to surveil twice? Oh, they also get that back. Well, you know what? That's okay. Okay, we're going to the hand. Resolve. We're going to discard 
Someone's going to draw a bunch of cards, and we're going to discard a bunch of cards. Our opponent only has our opponent only has twenty cards left, though. That's another thing to keep in mind. <laughs> oh man, this is a wild one. So I'm keeping the cards on top. They're going to get rid of this. Okay. And then they can like Cavalier of Gales to draw a million cards. This information campaign also draws a million cards. I think I just discard two lands here. Oh shoot, why did I discard that one? That was the land I actually wanted to keep. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Leyline of Anticipation. Okay. Man, I could have shut down their Field of the Dead. I'm just, like, not doing the thing where the thing is playing tight. Yeah, my phone needs to turn up the clock here. I'm going to draw two cards. Traveler's Amulet. The Pain Signet. Not bad with the Leela in hand. Time wipe. Okay, goodbye, graveyard. All two cards. <laughs> I think I wanna get rid of these. Man. Leyline of Anticipation is really bad when I don't have counter magic, or, or really any way of interacting at instant speed. Alright, well, we're going to time life. I don't think this is getting a whole ton better. I don't think my opponent can cast anything because of the Elspeth Conqueror's death. Do I even have a creature? I have a Teferi. Ooh, Teferi shutting off the Leyline of Anticipation? That's a big deal. Playing that, activating that might not have been too useful. And we can take a look at what's in our deck left, what is left. We got Ethereal Absolution, we have Best of the Sea God, and of course we have Dance of the Mans. I can just play out this Wishclaw Talisman. Alright, sure. I don't have to activate it. Saving two mana on the turn that I go for the huge Dance of the Mans. Whenever you cast, okay, so the Dance of the Mans right now would get Elspeth's Nightmare, Traveler's Amulet, Omen of the Sea, Divine Visitation, and Birth of Miletus. And it would do very little. It would mean that I have Divine Visitation in play, and that's awesome. And I guess I'd have a lot of 4-4s, but it wouldn't actually amount to that. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Why didn't they play that for a lot? I'm playing like mono artifacts and enchantments. Activate only on your turn. All right, Oath of Kaya. That is something that I wouldn't mind killing with uh, Oath. Blood for Bones. Okay. I guess I don't gain free life. I put Yurok back. I put a one of these up there. I only have four mana up, so I can't. I probably can't do too much. There comes a point where I just have to jam, right? Perhaps that moment is now. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh... Here we go. All right, this is this is what we're here to do, right? What do I pay this for? Five, six. I think. Okay, so one, two, three, 
four, five, six. I think I actually just want to pay it for five because I don't want those creatures, uh, those cards to be enchantments. I think. For maybe I do want them to be creatures. I think I actually do. Okay, six. All right, here we go. Dance of the Mans. This is exactly what we signed up to do when we built this deck. Alright, cool. Uh, I can make them do it now, or I can just hit this Yurok. That's probably good enough. Alright, no, I can't hit that because it doesn't cost three. Um, no planes left. Yeah, I've got 20 cards left in my library. Wolf Strider. Okay. Make two goats? Sure. Okay. I mean, we're, we have a lot of 4-4s four in play. We've got a lot of 4-4s. Four um, yeah, don't want to play Kaiserath. I don't think that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take back that Wishclaw Talisman. No tutor for you. <laughs> That was that was part of my goal is to uh, be able to um, have some sort of oblivion ring effect in the graveyard for when I play Dance of the Mans and then be able to steal back the uh, Wishclaw Talisman. One way of breaking the symmetry of it. Glass casket. All right. I really hope that there are not sweepers on my opponent's uh, side of the board. Alright! All the 4-4s! Four now these are 5-4s because they have flying because that's what Leela does. Oh, I get to attack with everything. My opponent's at 41 life. They can gain a bunch of life with Hydro Traces, but I don't think it's gonna work. Oh, I get to draw a card? Cool. Awesome. <laughs> All right, well, opponent does have um, Leyline of Anticipation up, which is scary. Yeah, okay, so they drew a Risen Reef. All right, I mean, look, look, opponent. <laughs> there is, there's no mystery to what we're doing here. We're, I'm just gonna click on the orange button. And if you can survive this, uh, there's nothing I can really do about it. Blow up everything that costs two. How many things is that? Turns out it's a fair number of things. Oh yeah, I guess my Dawn of Hope is gone. Maybe I should have made a lot of tokens in response. Definitely should have made a lot of tokens in response. Okay, so it looks like the top three cards didn't do anything, but... Maybe they did find something that they want to keep. Hey, remember way back when we were when we were boating, beating our opponent down with this deck, and um, <laughs> we played Cura Best the Sea God twice. Well, it looks like we're going to play Cura Best the Sea God a third time. All right, opponent's tapped out. Uh, okay, I, I should say if our opponent survives this, which they might not, I didn't do the math. They take 5 plus 20 plus 6 plus 2. 30, yeah, that's more than 31. Unless they have some way of gaining life. No, I did the math wrong. I think they're like just barely alive. Okay. And by just barely alive, I mean at 10. <laughs> Not quite just barely alive. Alright, well, we're gonna need something good here. It's not impossible. The, uh... The Kraken is actually downgraded to an angel. <laughs> I mean, what can they do? They can play a huge finale of Devastation, maybe? They're really, they're really battling this out. 
got a lot of things coming their way. They're, they're, they're gonna have stuff tapped down. The graveyard's gonna be exiled. <laughs> right? <laughs> Our sagas were creatures, <laughs> which is unfortunate because they basically had fading. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's an angel, right? All right, let's go to the attack step. I will attack with all of these. I guess they should have probably blocked the visitation because that's the one that's making four fours. I don't remember what exactly they blocked on the last turn. I wasn't paying enough attention but getting rid of this is probably good for them. They they need to do a lot of stuff with not a ton of cards. Special piece of war. All right, you got it. Murder Strider, okay. Well, Murder Strider gains two life. All right, and at long last, we did it! We danced the mans. We did the dance at the mans. That was all I wanted to do. Holy cow, those were long games. I think that was only our like fourth game of the evening. Something like that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we set out to do something and we did it, even though there was a lot of complaining along the way. Um, I just don't think that like, come on, come on, load. I just don't think that white decks are in a good spot now, and this is essentially a white deck. Like, you can definitely build it in a different way, so that's, like, focused on flyers or focused on control. But the way that this is built, the way I'm trying to dance at the mans, uh, the, the way I'm trying to build it, it's really a white deck, and I feel like white decks really suffer right now. So uh, there's, you know, a lot of disappointment in this deck as well. <laughs> I mean... Uh, I think we're in, in, in the game that we just won. I think that we were in a position early on where where we could have, um, if we were playing a deck that was better, we would have been able to uh, close out the game a lot faster. But I guess it's not about if you win, it's about how you win. And we won while dancing at the mans. Of the mans, whatever. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I've got two more days that I'm planning on doing back-to-back uh, -back videos. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video if you would uh, want to do so. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash signingvale and uh, uh, join the Discord, the Brawl Project Discord. There's a link in the description of all these videos um as well as a link to the deck list all right that's enough blabbering for me have a good night uh thank you for watching and i'll see you next time mm -hmm.